So now we're talking about our final C of the four C's, namely cut. Here we aren't talking about the shape of the stone, but rather the quality of the cut itself, which is mainly correlated to the amount of brilliance or light reflectivity on a spectrum with other diamonds of the same shape. So for example, an emerald shaped diamond can't achieve, or an emerald shape is not going to be as brilliant as a round shape, but that doesn't mean an emerald shaped diamond can't achieve a cut grade of excellence. The cut is graded relative to the standard for that shape. With that said, here you see on the left an example of a rough diamond stone or crystal as it might appear upon being dug up and cleaned before any cutting. The cutter, of course, has to make a number of decisions on what to do with this raw crystal in order to maximize his or her profit from the stone. The first dilemma, of course, is to decide on the shape, which we've already talked about. But then once the shape is selected, the cutter will proceed to cut the diamond to that shape, trying to achieve as high a cut quality as possible. Some jewelers will argue that cut is the most important of the C's, which it may be, but from the standpoint of complicating your decision making? I find it rather straightforward and we'll discuss why shortly. Anyway, on the right above are the various measures that might be reported on a diamond you are considering and which a grader would have to compare to either the dimensions themselves or the ratios between them to a set of standard dimensions and ratios for the shape in order to determine the grade of cut. Thankfully for most, the cut grade really provides a summary score for the balance between all of these various measures. So especially as a consumer, rather than having to understand the ideal table size, depth, girdle, thickness, pavilion angle, etc., etc., for a diamond of the shape and size you're looking at, you can rely on the cut score to give an overall grade for how well the diamond is cut how much brilliance or fire and fire you should get from it. At the top above, you can see the GIA scale for cut, which really starts at excellent and then proceeds through very good to good to fair to poor. You'll note, however, on the left of the scale that there's a grading level that is quote unquote even better than GIA excellent. These are diamonds marketed by retailers under various proprietary cut gradings that are meant to represent an absolute best of the best in cut quality. Rarecarrot.com has Rare Carrot Ideal. Blue Nile has Aster Ideal. James Allen has True Hearts, and so on. In the case of these diamonds, they should all receive a GIA grade of excellent for cut, and you are relying on the retailer or an additional lab that the retailer is using for these better than excellent ratings. As the diagram on the right shows, in general the cut grade is in relation to the depth of the diamond uh, relative to its width, so depth as a percentage of width. Um, and basically, too shallow or too deep, both extremes will not reflect the most amount of light. Somewhere in the middle is ideal, or what GIA would rate as excellent. Now, think about the trade-off from the cutter's perspective. You know, given that a, a stone of a larger diameter um, is going to be perceived as larger, you know, the cutter is going to is going to want to push typically uh, to a, towards a shallower stone. Um, so obviously too shallow and, and you, the reflectivity of the brilliance and fire is starts to get lost. Um, but that, that's kind of the trade-off that that's happening is that you know in order to make the, the stone look as uh, substantial as possible, you know, the trade-off is, is in this, this depth. And, and, you know, too deep, too shallow, both extremes have their, their negatives. So there's, there's definitely a sweet spot, a range of depth as a percent that tends to be ideal or excellent 
for each shape. Okay. Now, one thing to note is that GIA only produces cut grades for round diamonds. The other shapes do not get a cut score. So you'll be relying first on your retailer to grade the cut, and then again on your appraiser if you get the diamond appraised to confirm that grading. Hopefully you don't get a stone that your retailer says is excellent or better, but your appraiser says is only uh, good or worse. 